Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. Yes, what we need is only your prayers. And then uh, prayers. Counts. First Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 4 from verse 1 to 5. Let a man so account of us as of ministers of Christ and stewards of the ministries of God. Here, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judge of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. Verse 4, I know nothing against myself, yet I'm not here by justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Wherefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and make manifest the counsel of the hearts, and then shall each man have his praise from God. Amen. Can you just read verse 5 in Amplified Bible? So do not go on passing judgment before the appointed time, but wait until the Lord comes, for he will both bring the light, the secret things that are hidden in darkness, and disclose the motives of their hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I once preached to you about be ready as a Christian. Just like you said. Be ready. To meet Jesus as a Christian. You know, when I'm <clears throat> reading here, I'm seeing the what Paul, the way he had confidence. To extend that, he said, no one can judge him. It doesn't even judge himself. He, in verse 1, he said, ministers of God or Christians are stewards. I wanted to tell you, but, uh, you know, the difference between a follower and a steward. A steward is having a great responsibility. Because sometimes he is sent in an assignment. A follower just for like this. You know, a follower just like You know when you are a follower, can you just follow? Come, follow me. Shalom, Rao. You do like that. Whatever I do, you must do. Okay, you have iPad. You have iPad. You have a Bible here. When you have a follower, you do like this. Now, let me shalom, Rao. Dear, come home. Can you see I'm walking? Le abonore kamu for recipela. Walking, we are walking. Zamai, I get zamai. You want to power me? Is a follower this one? You must shalom Rao. A Christian, Mopolushwa. The first time is required to be a follower. Into yama tomato into the idea. You come must shalom Rao. I'm a The second stage of a Christian is to be a steward. A Christian can copy. But a steward does not copy. 
the Christians will start to follow, follow, follow. A Christian must follow his leader. If you read uh, 1 Corinthians 11, where the Holy Spirit was imitating me, as I imitate Christ. It's a follower. Be my follower. As I follow Christ. But here, the Bible says, stay what? On him is required to be faithful. In other words, he will be sent in errands. He must go and do exactly what he has This is the highest level of a Christian. Look at verse 2. He says, here, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. But look at verse 3, the shocking verse. It says, but with me. In other words, this man say, I have passed a line of being a steward. That is the last stage now. The first stage is what? Follower. The, the second one. Steward. The last stage is this one that we are talking about. Three. He says, but with me, it's a very small thing. A steward must be judged. But the one who send him. He says, it is a very small thing that I should be judge of you. There are some people that they reach a level where you cannot even judge them. This one says, it's a very small thing. Okay, look here. Because I judge not my own self. In other words, Paul is saying sometimes, God makes me to do things I don't know, but I just end up doing it. When Jesus spoke with Peter, he says, Peter, Peter, when you grow up, you will put your hand and someone will lead you. He will say, when you are reaching this stage, you will be ready even to die for me. This, this is the stage that you know, temptation happens, but it doesn't bother you. you. Even when you judge a person, you just carry on when you do what he's doing. But the message here is this one. If we read verse 4, the message here is this one. If we read verse 5, it says, Wherefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Listen, here, it means we don't know well in our judgments. Let's leave all judgments to God. We focus in ourselves. So that when He comes, okay, look at this. Who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness? When he comes to us, there are things in us which are hidden. And make manifest the cancers of the hearts, my God. When, when he comes, you will look at the intents of our hearts. Then shall each man have his praise from God. Paul said, I don't judge you, don't judge me. I'm in a level where you won't understand. That's why Paul, his confidence. That is why Paul was so powerful to extend. He was able to say that he is ready to go. He told Timothy and said, hey, I'm ready to be pouring out like a cup. In other words, 
my outward appearance is like but there is something inside me so if you see this one it says so how level la moire this intents of the heart there are also hidden things that will be brought to light. Today, I want us to be ready so that we will be able to have confidence like this. Man. If we can be ready, we can live in this last stage. The last stage is readiness. The first one is what? Follow. The second one? Stay what? The third one? Huh? Readiness. So if you reach a level where you are ready, you will be, you won't be like Lord's wife. Where the angel come and say, can you see the run for your life? And you are still thinking about your furniture. I don't know if you hear me. That is the stage that we Christians need to be. Christians need to be. You are ready because you have been alerted. You have been alerted. You have been alerted. You have been warned. This is the last stage. You know that everything of us will pass. You become ready and say, I want to go. But if you just become steward, and you don't become ready, you'll be, there are many stewards. They become steward. Because they know if they do this, they will obey God, they will, they will get this, they will get that, they will get that, if they obey God. But this one who is ready, he doesn't care whether he does not get anything. anything. He is just ready to go. If we read uh, Hebrews, I just want to show you Hebrews 11. You see people were ready there. You'll be surprised. These people, you know, they were so ready. Hebrews 11. Okay. If you read 11 verse 5. Verse 5. It says, by faith, Enoch. Enoch lived the life of readiness. was translated that he should not see death. And he was not found. Because God translated him. For he had witness born to him. That, that before his translation, or before he had been well pleasing unto God. Well pleasing unto God. And then God could come and say, "Let's go." Can you see the readiness? He was he was living on earth, but ready to go. Pleasing, well pleasing. To extend that when God say, "Let's go," he was. many of us here, if God say, "Let's go," will be like Ezekiah. You know Hezekiah what he did? Let's go. And Hezekiah, the Bible says, when the prophet left, he faced the world. He said, oh Lord, you forgot. You cannot allow me to die this way. What will my enemy say? The prophet said, fix your house in order. Go 
you are going to die. Oh, I'm, ah. ah. yeah, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Please, uh, God. Remember how I've, I've worked before. You. And I've done what is good. What is faithful in yeah, your before you ask? Say, okay. Prophet, go back. Go and tell him that he still wants to be here. I saw already. Right. We'll give you 15 years. Right. But this 15 years, 15 years was 15 years where God saw that he will sin. Yeah. And he will sin. And he will sin. And his enemies can come and defeat him. I don't know if you hear me. So please go and tell him that he will sin. And his enemies can come and defeat him. I don't know if you hear me. Sometimes when God puts you in readiness, and make you to be alerted, and make you to be alerted, and make you to be alerted, you live a life where you say, even if it can be tough, I'll go home. If I can wake up to find that my life is finished, I'll be excited. Uh, I don't know if you're hearing me. Let me show you something there. That's I say, my friend. Are you ready? And the person say what? Look at this verse 13 of Hebrews 11. He says, this all die in faith. Not having received the promises, but having seen them and greeted them from far and having confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. These ones, they say, they saw what God has promised. And the Bible said they didn't want even to wait for that. They died in faith. They saw that they are giving greed their curse. I want to go to heaven. I can see that. They died in faith. And they saw the blessings but they never worry about them. It says, second stand of that verse says, but having seen them and greeted them from afar. But they told them, say, hey, we are strangers. We are pilgrims here. We have hope. Why do you want to give me this? Have you ever found God wanting to give you something? You say, what do you want to give me this? I want to come home. Have you ever found something like that? 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 To us, it's a testimony. If God says, I want to give you a car, you won't even sleep. You will tell your friend. Say, my friend, a girl came to me and said, you want to give me a car. You will see, it will come to pass. But this was a, we can see them. We can see them. We can see them. We are visitors. We are not here for that. 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 Even if they can come, we will leave them behind. These were ready. Okay, let me show you another scripture. Are you ready? And the person say what? That is why when you are sick, the, the, moment, the moment when you are sick now, because you are not ready, eh, all doctors will know you. All doctors will know you. All doctors. My doctor Kamuka. Even as will beat your head. Lere na tata rube tato anamu. Ba, you are ill. Ba, you are ill. Ufodi le, ufodi le. Until you have my grade. Ufetel lau chora ke toye kholo. But these ones who are not even afraid. Ba, you know, ba sabo ifing. Because people who are ready, they don't have fear. Kare matiba ba itukishi. They live by faith. They are always ready. They are always ready. Adula ba itukishi. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at this verse. Are leveling mo. If we read Matthew twenty-five. This is a readiness issue. From verse 1. Just Matthew 25 or 12 verse 1. The 10 visions. 10 visions. Then we read verse 2. Matthew 25 or 12 verse 1. The 10 visions. So this was, they've been given away. Can you read from verse 1? Then the kingdom of heaven 
will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, it means thoughtless, silly, and careless. And five were wise, far-sighted, practical, and sensible. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them. But the wise took flux of oil along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delayed, they all began to nod off and they fell asleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and put their own lamps in order, trimmed the wicked and added oil to lead them. But the foolish fish virgins said to the wise, Give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, otherwise there will not be enough for us and you and for you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy oil for yourselves. But while they were going away to buy oil, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut and locked. Carry on reading. Later, the others also came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, I do not know you. We have no relationship. Therefore, be on the alert, be prepared and ready. For you do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. Right. Okay, let's, let's try to, I mean, open up on the issue of this parable. The fools... The fools had oil. If you can read there, the fools also had oil. But the oil, the oil was not enough. That's what the Bible said. They didn't take the extra oil. In other words, your Christianity must be having extras. If you, are, if you are in a level of readiness, the fools had oil. But I'll tell you what happened. The Bible says, the wise one who said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us, he didn't want to be there. And the Bible says, all of them puts their lights or they trim their lights. All of them, even the ones who had oil, but they they had extra. when the cry came, it was a cry of warning. You know, most of the time I used to find this thing, it was happening several times. But the time when we see people used to show the film of Jesus. And then also the film of hell. <laughs> they used to show the film of hell. And then also the film of hell. film of hell. Once they see that, you know, it's like a kind. You see, everybody try to show you want to be a Christian. But their Christianity has been based on fear of what they saw. So same applies here. If you can read here, you see the Bible say there was a cry. This cry, listen, it happens the time of of using extras. Let me say the time of using extras. It happens between the cry. The cry. And the time when they realize that their lives are off. I'll just try to say this this time of the cry of trimming out the light. And the time when the lights were off. 
It happens by the time of the cry. Now, the time of the cry. The they wait. They waited. They waited. And the light goes off. All these people were They wait when the light goes off. Look, they slumber with others. You know, slumbering with others means they came to church with others. They pray with others. But they could not ask others. They could see that this one is a best Christian, but they could not ask, what is your secret? And the person said, hey, I'm doing extras. When I pray, I pray extra. When I stay in the word of God, extra. Themselves, they had just enough. That will be finished very soon. And the Bible says, when Bible, Papa, the brother group came, he found there were no more. The advice, they were searching. They were supposed to have searched before. In other words, the money they have used they might have half it and buy a little oil another one they were eating it they had time to for fantasy than to wait for the Sometimes we have got so much time to watch TV. But we don't have time of the Bible. So much time to talk. That you don't have extra time of prayer. You finish it in entertaining yourself. And the Bible says when he came, the door was shut. Later they came. And knock. And they were told that we don't know you. Because once you become late to get what is needed, you are not needed. You need to do it as soon as you Once you become late, to gather what is needed in your Christian life. Even the brother groom won't need you. So this is the time to check yourself and make sure that there's extra oil. You need to have extra oil. I can see you have got oil of reading Bible sometimes. But you don't have oil of reading Bible all the time. You have got oil of sometimes. You don't have extra. One time I, I I told my mother that Mama, I stay, I was reading the Bible, but I found it was in the morning. <laughs> Can you see you read the Bible? You stay in the Bible, you read the Bible, you read the Bible. And you don't look at the time. Because extras makes you to have extra also. Fellowship with him. In the morning, I, I look at the time and say, ah, what is this ah, is it the morning? Because I have to read like this, no tomorrow. I have to pray like this, no tomorrow. If you are ready, if you are ready, you will resist the devil. And the devil will flee. If you are not ready, you will give chance to the Satan. You are, you are, you are watching uh, YouTube things of Christians. Very soon, 
you find yourself in pornography. Have you ever find you are watching, you are watching. Yeah, even playing with them. Amen, amen. You don't know how you switch to pornography. When you are watching pornography, also you are saying amen. Because now you are watching. You have got enough time to watch. But if you have got extras, you use all that time for that. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. The foolish. I don't know if you are hearing me. The foolish. We're supposed to be saying to the wise. We are together before judgment. Where am I lacking? The Christian is like this. Where am I lacking? Look what the fools did. They all had the cry. They come together. Maybe it is the cry of men of God. They will say it. And by the time of trimming the light, <inaudible> all of them did. <inaudible> but their oil was limited. I don't know if you hear me. I don't know how far your oil is. Maybe it's challenge by temptations. It's small. Very soon it will go off. If your oil is extras, even when temptations come, they will find a light. You'll be carrying on. Shining your shine. I see you shining your shine in the midst of tribulations, in the midst of persecutions. And because you are waiting, you know what you are waiting. Waiting for. You are always ready. Say I'm ready. Tell him I'm ready. I don't care. I want what devil is saying. I'm ready. The devil can do what he's doing. Because I know my destiny. I know where I'm going. See, if you know where you're going, you don't care what the devil is saying. Because look. That extra oil will defend you by the time of unfavorable situation. But if it dries off the light will go. Ask your neighbors. Do you think you have extra oil? Look at the person you will see. No, no oil here. There is no oil. When the problem hits, the light goes off. When challenges come, the light goes off. I can see that light. I speak more oil. I speak more oil. That problem will never put you down. That challenge will never put you down. I see a miracle coming. Readiness. I say readiness to be blessed. Readiness to live a victorious life. Readiness in victory. Readiness in breakthrough. Readiness in success. Readiness in everything. That pertaining to your spiritual life. If you believe in Hallelujah. In fact, I just want to tell you something. Look at this verse. You, you will see that truly we must not waste time. If we read Hebrews 12, 16 to 17, 16 and 17. I want just to read that verse. I think I won't talk too much. I've got many things to talk here. It says, Let us hold fast our confession. 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 When he wanted to regain title to his inheritance of the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no opportunity for repentance, 
There was no way to repair what he had done. No chance to recall the choice he had made, even though he sought for it with bitter tears. You know here is opportunity when it's presented for you to live a life of salvation. Don't misuse it. Because by the time when you are crying for it, you will never get it. If you read there, you see the Bible say, though he cried tears. He was rejected. Because in him there was no space of repentance. I'll give you an example. You know, there was a time when I was growing. I found in our village there were many criminals. There were a lot of fights. Uh, many people who grew up before me and my time. Fighting was, was the language. So many, many people died. Many those criminals who were known. And many people that I know also died. And I asked myself, if so they were given the opportunity that I was given, what would happen? All right, let me give you another example. By the time of Noah, uh, it was only his family that was saved. And then, you know, the husbands, and the, the, the wives of, of his children. And someone was in hospital. By the time he was giving birth, someone was. I mean, doing sub A by that time. And then others were like innocent. So I was asking myself, like what I ask in concerning my village. If they were given chance to grow. If they were given chance to grow, maybe they could just repent. You know, when I was having those kind of questions, I found the Bible says, it's God who knows the heart. God even saw the heart of a baby was born. That this baby won't repent. God saw some people that I grew up dying. And he saw that even if they give them chance, they won't repent. This scripture becomes a real truth. Even when he shed tears, there was no repentance in his heart. There was no way he can repent. Listen, there are some people you can fast for them, you can pray for them, you will never change them. I don't know if you're hearing me. There are some people they can be in the church. You preach, you do this. But they cannot do they cannot be ready for God. So I had all these scriptures concerning this man. The Bible says the opportunity was present. Today is your opportunity. It's been presented to you. For you to say, I want to live a holy life and follow God. So the question is, after this salvation has been given to you, are you going to live that salvation? Are you going to be a steward? A follower? A steward? 
Tabamulaki, or a Christian who's always or what Tabamo Pulusha, Yadulangale Latin. If you are going to do that, how Tahono de Rasil, I can tell you, Nkale Wichatabashi, God also will make you example. Modimotali dear Tupo, Babahangwe. The Bible says, seek the kingdom of God. God is always searching so for a generation. You want to write something about it. I don't know if you hear me. Can you read Galatians 6, verse 9? It says, there are things that will make us weary. Just be ready. Just read that verse. It says what? Verse 9. Yes. Let us not go weary or us, become discouraged. Let us not grow weary or become discouraged. In doing good. In doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap. Listen, there's a proper time. Just be ready and live a right life. There are things that will come to discourage you or make you tired. Weary. There will be time when, when you come to church, you feel, oh God, when are you going to answer me? Just don't, do not be weary. I see a proper time in your life. It's coming to you in the name of Jesus. Listen. I found that when God wants to promote you, when God wants to promote you, He allow pressures to come around you. Those pressures must not cut your readiness. Just hold on to the Lord and follow Him like strangers. There is something you want to do with you. There is a season. And that season is today. I said there is a season. And that season is today. You know how God works. Always His eyes are on the faithful. He is looking around. You want to do something, you look around. He is looking around. But his eyes are on the faithful. When he's looking at you, he just says, I have humor. If God mention your name, temptations are invited. So, be ready to follow him. In the midst of those tribulations Because he has mentioned your name. That's why there's a bad situation So, if you are ready to say, I don't care about what I'm facing, even if I die, I will follow God. You will see God changing the situation. Because whatever that you are facing is there to alter your decisions. To make you to change from the stand you took. That's why I say, hey, I don't care about what I'm facing. I'm standing my ground. I don't care about what I'm facing. I know my God is in control. I want to tell you that. Don't live your Christian life. Or doubt your stand. Just be ready for God. If you can come today, say, I'm God. If you are ready for Him, he will be ready even to bless you. He will be ready even to lift you. you. Remove everybody out of your heart. And be ready for him. Remove every situation from your life. And be ready for him. Be ready for him. Listen. Induce easy. Be ready for him. In due time. In due time. A time like this, you will lift you up. 
You want to lift you up. You want to raise you up. You want to lift you up. You want to raise you up. I say you are the one that the Lord is lifting you up. You are the one that the Lord has chosen your name. He has chosen you to be an example in front of your opposers. To be an example to be a blessing if you believe shout hallelujah. As somebody says, if he comes today, will you go? Therefore, if you say no, it means you are also not ready for his presence. Can you ask again your neighbor? If he comes today, will you go? What about tomorrow? If you say yeah, you are even ready for that car, for that house, for that blessing, you are ready for that miracle. Okay, take it, take it. Take, what are you taking? What are you taking? A miracle. Can you also take? Can you take death? Also take death? Are you ready for death? Okay, congratulations. Keep watching Charis TV.